trust and pray you've had a good week. And uh, I wish there was about five times as many people here as there is. But that does not negate the fact that I am grateful that you're here. And I appreciate you for valuing this. And uh, we're going to have church. Amen. Let's get in and ask God to just minister to us and let us minister to Him. And, uh, you know, we say that, but how do you minister to the Lord? How do you give something that the Lord would desire to take? And uh, you bring Him your heart with sincerity. You bring Him your heart with, with humility. And uh, you, uh, you're joyous. I know, uh, for me, I think the greatest crowning testimony for a man is to have a happy family. That means he's doing a good job. And uh, when, he's, uh, when, when, when uh, the family's not uh, feeling safe and feeling content, sometimes it's a family problem. And sometimes it's a man problem. But we know it's never a God problem. Amen? God is able to keep us from falling. He's able to protect us. And so I'm thankful tonight, aren't you? I'm thankful that I have learned to trust Him. Let's stand together tonight. Uh, here comes another crew. Amen. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Uh, I got a little bit of news to share with you guys. I'm sure you all heard about it. But my, grand, my, my, my grandma, my, my mom and dad um, have bought them a house in Phoenix, if you can believe it. Um, imagine that. And uh, so... They've got them a, a winter home, not a summer home, a winter home. <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, they said to tell everybody hello, and they miss us, and they can't wait to get back here. They're coming back uh, here in just a couple weeks, I think, uh, for a few, what, few days. So uh, let's ask the Lord to keep them safe. And uh, we've got several requests we prayed about Wednesday night. A lot of people uh, that we know that are sick and uh, facing cancer and all kinds of issues, but um, I'd like for us tonight to just focus on giving the Lord thanks for what He's done, to come into His house with thanksgiving and into His courts with praise. So uh, let's let's enter in tonight. Amen. Pray with me, Heavenly Father. We just want to say thank you tonight. Thank you that you brought us through another year. Thank you, Lord, that you've kept us to 2024. And Lord, I thank you for the optimistic uh, faith that, um, that folks uh, can have in you. To look back and to know that how you, uh, there's been challenges, but you've delivered us out of all of them. You have been there through thick and thin. You have never forsaken us. You have never abandoned us. You have never even withdrawn from us in any measure. Lord, and I just thank you for that. I appreciate you so much for the the health challenges that you've brought some of us through this past year. I thank you, Lord, that our families uh, are still intact. I thank you so much, God, for those that have uh, went on to their reward and they're, uh, they're shouting around the throne. Thank you, God, for being faithful to the end for them. We've uh, experienced some loss, but you have, uh, you have brought contentment and your comfort in the midst of all of it. And we just thank you tonight. We desire for you to know, Lord, that we are not, uh, uh, we're not uh, just a uh, gimme, gimme, gimme mindset, Lord, but we are desiring to let you know that we love you and we're grateful to you. We appreciate you, Lord, and without you, we could do nothing, but we know, Lord, that you are our rock. You are our fortress. You are our helper. You are our healer when we're sick. You are our comfort when we feel anxious and we are disturbed. You are, Lord, everything that we need, and we love you and we praise you tonight. We give you glory and honor. Help us, Lord, this year to serve you better. Help us, Lord, to be more uh, vibrant in our love for you, to be more enthusiastic in our service for you. Lord, to be more passionate in our uh, witness. And Lord, I just ask tonight that you would just make us what we need to be because you've been so good to us. Oh, God, you've been so faithful. You've been so merciful. God, we just love you tonight. Have your way in our lives. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Remain standing. Brother Steve, lead us in some singing tonight, if you would. Amen.
sing just a closer walk with thee. That is a reality for every one of us that we have a closer walk with Jesus. Glory to God. Everybody but Brother Devin, you may be seated. Brother Devin, testify tonight. Yeah? Amen. Praise the Lord for his protection. Amen. Anybody else got a testimony? You'd like to give the Lord some praise. Brother Swartz? 
Yes. Yes. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Oh, my. <laughs> Not only did he keep you safe, you got home fast. Hey, Amen. Anybody else got testimony? Did anybody have a good Christmas and New Year? All right, Braden. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Brother Wells, you was about to testify. Yes. Amen. Amen. How many of you can say thank the Lord for a healthy body? Amen. How many of you can say thank the Lord for a sound mind? Yes. I don't want to get folks a lying now. How many of you can say thank the Lord for his blessings? Amen. How many of you can say thank the Lord for his faithfulness? How many of you could say, thank the Lord for His mercies? Amen. Amen. How many of you tonight could say, thank the Lord that you get, get to live right here, right now, and experience today? Amen. 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 God has been so good. I love Him tonight. Brother Wells, would you come help us receive the offering? And uh, I just encourage us to get the new year started off on a good track given to the Lord. Amen. And... Uh, you can't outgive God, can you? No, we can't. Amen. Brother Wells, pray over the offering. Thank you for giving. And uh, I just want to say, and I know that this is a little pastoral in nature, but I just plead with all of us to work towards just having a hunger to grow this year. Amen. Um, it's, it's like every new year, it's a fresh start. It's a time of evaluation. But it's also a time of uh, anticipation. And uh, we can grow. We can go forward. And one thing that's been really weighing on my spirit lately is that the world has been in major turmoil in the last three or four years. Major turmoil. There's things that have happened that I didn't think would ever, I'd ever see happen. Amen? And uh, there are some major changes coming but it does not change the fact that God is bigger than all of it it does not change the fact that, that there's still good things happening there's a, a line to a song that uh, I just run across on, on the internet 
and I don't, it ain't a Christian song, uh, but it's, uh, it's actually a silly song. But one of the lines in that song says, babies still get born even in a war. And uh, the, the thought, I think, as I thought about that, is life goes on. Life goes on. There are some dying, but there are some yet to be born. Amen? And I believe that Eddie and Whitney are going to get to experience the joys of parenthood and, and life is springing forth and that's a good thing and uh, Caleb and Rayla and um, I'm looking out here to see if there's any other candidates that we could, we could get some babies in here um, <laughs> Sister Schwartz is shaking her head <laughs> oh. but anyway Lord help us to have an optimistic faith-looking, forward-looking view this year. Amen? Amen. Amen. Bryce is going to come and minister for us tonight. And I want to say I appreciate Brother Swartz and Brother Eddie for taking care of last Friday night. Um, it was last minute. We weren't really sure that we were going to get to go to see our other kids, but uh, uh, it, it was a last-minute decision. So thank you all for stepping in and stepping up. I greatly appreciate it, and I heard nothing but good reports. So uh, thank you all very much. Bryce, give us what the Lord's laid on your heart tonight. Hey, man, I'm glad to be in church, aren't you? We'll try that one more time. I'm glad to be in church, aren't you? Amen. Amen. There we go. Sound like we were at a game for a minute. The title of my message tonight will be Open. Um, and before I open, I'll be uh, explaining just a little bit more about it. Um, many, th many things in life, you see through the holiday season, there's so much media propaganda pushed onto people to accept a certain idea that, I mean, nowadays everyone's kids in Santa. And me and Dad were talking earlier today on what culture really is, and culture is no more than a shared set of values between a set number of people. And many times in life we're forced to, or at least we're attempted to be forced to swallow stuff that we do not need to swallow. So let me dive right in before I run down a rabbit hole beyond repair. <laughs> My text will be from James chapter 1 and verse 5. If you would stand for the reading of the word. If any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth all men liberally, and abradeth not, and it shall be given him. Dad, would you pray? Amen. You can be seated. According to the King James Dictionary, abradeth means to scold, reproach, or reprimand. I'm so glad when we ask God for wisdom, he does not belittle us, so you don't already know. You can see a lot of times through talking to kids, it's, there's a lot of people, when they communicate to someone underneath them, it is very, the tonality in which they communicate is very negative. I'm so glad God does not treat us like just little toddlers. Hey, you don't already know? Come on, Santa's not real. I'm glad God be, is being straightforward with us. I'm going to read a pretty large set of scriptures here in just a second. Uh, from Matthew chapter 13. I'm going to start at verse 1 and move to 15. But it's going to explain a lot of where I'm going, and I'll circle back to it numbers of times throughout. The same day went Jesus out of the house and sat by the seaside. And great multitudes were gathered together unto him so that he went into the ship and sat and the whole multitude stood at the shore. So he had a bit of a platform, if you could say, without having a platform or a church to be in. You can just imagine a ship set on a shore and a bunch of people just sitting right there. So, I mean, in a way, it was a message somewhat like this, if you think about it. He spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow, and when he sowed, 
Some seed fell by the wayside, and fowls came and devoured them up. Some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprung up because there was no deepness of earth. When the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell upon thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. But some fell on good ground and brought forth fruit, some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. Who hath an ear, let him hear. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. And the disciples came and said to him, Why speakest thou in parables, that thou to them in parables? He answered and said unto them, Because it is given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. For whosoever hath to him shall be given, and he who hath more and shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not from him shall be taken away, even that he hath. Therefore speak I to them in parables, because they seeing see not, hearing hear not, neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which saith, By hearing ye shall hear, by, by hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see, and not perceive. For the people, for this people's heart is waxed gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes are, have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and should understand with their hearts, and should be converted, and I should heal them. A little bit lengthy, but I promise it'll tie together. Point one is open your ears. We read there in Matthew 13 and 9, who hath ears to hear, let him hear. If you got ears, raise your hand. Congratulations, you're qualified to hear. <laughs> Why do we need to hear? This is a little question. I'm looking for some, some answers. Here's we, we get some uh, interaction. Why do we need to hear? I'm waiting. Perceived? What are we trying to perceive? <laughs> Knowledge. Truth. Faith cometh by hearing. On a big truck, forgive me for bringing this into this, you have to have an alarm at the back of the truck for when you put the thing in reverse because there's dangers. You have to warn. You need to hear because there's warnings you need to hear because, I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've been backing up and this guy's on the job site and he just don't see me at all. He don't see you at all. He don't see you at all. You have to hit the horn to get him to pay attention. There's dangerous things that we can avoid if we would listen. The most basic answer of why do we need to hear is because there's something worth listening to. Have you ever been watching a video with someone and they won't stop talking while it's playing? <laughs> I know I'm guilty of this when watching sports. You get into it, and you just don't think there's other people trying to hear what, you're, what you've already tied up in your mind, and you've already got your two cents on. So sometimes it's hard to hear through all the noise and all the competition of different things you can hear. If you've ever been in a crowd anywhere, really, you can tell it's hard to hear someone talking when there's other people talking. But you have to hone in on what you are trying to listen to. For these people, they were trying to hear Jesus. Now, I don't know how far away from them, how far away from Jesus they were, but I can imagine if they were all talking, it would probably have been pretty hard to hear them. That's why proxy to Jesus is so important. The closer you are to someone, if you're right next to someone, it really doesn't matter if there's so much noise there could be sirens, horns, but if you're close to Jesus, you can hear him. One man said it's impossible to have your head on the chest of the master and not hear his heartbeat. It's impossible. So in order for you to hear what God is saying to you in your life, you have to be close to him because there is a lot of competition. In Proverbs 1, or in Proverbs 2 and verse 1 and 2, 
My son, if thou wilt receive my words and will hide my commandments with thee, so that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom and apply it, apply thine heart to understanding. There's a lot of trash. There's a lot of junk that you don't need to be listening to. Because A, it clogs up what you can hear from God. Because when you're paying attention to trash, it's pretty hard to hear anything but it. But it says, if thou wilt receive my words, hide my commandments with thee. This is Solomon in Proverbs. And David, his dad, said, thy word have I hid in my heart. I see some generational information transfer right here. Somebody told someone, hide the commandments in your heart. Amen. My next point is open your eyes. In Psalms 119 and verse 18, open mine eyes that I may behold the wondrous things of thy law. Sometimes you need to say, God, I can't see. I don't know what I'm doing. Open mine eyes to your word. Because I'm, I'm guilty of this too. You can be reading the Bible. You can be doing it great. You're on schedule. You, you've, you've put more in. Your day's ahead. And it just seems like, God, what are you saying? And that sounds terrible to say, I know, but you've got to ask God, open my eyes. Show me what I'm not seeing. Because it's there if he'll open your eyes. In Proverbs 3 and verse 7, be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. And I'll read another one real quick before I dive into that. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but he that hearkeneth to counsel is wise. How do you see yourself? That's a very, very vital question in life. No smart man have, has ever looked in the mirror and asked for advice. You don't know what you don't know, and there's no point of asking yourself. One of the best examples I can find of this, and this is another stretch of scriptures that's going to take up a second. Second Chronicles 10 and verse 1. I believe this to be a very, very accurate description of this. And Rehoboam went to Shechem, for to Shechem, where all Israel came to make him king. And it came to pass when Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who was in Egypt, whether he had fled from the presence of Solomon the king and heard it, that Jeroboam returned to Egypt. And they sent and called, so Jeroboam and all of Israel came and spake to Rehoboam, saying, Thy father made our yokes grievous. Now, therefore, ease somewhat of the grievous servant. Ease thou somewhat of of the grievous servitude of thy father and his heavy yoke that he put on us and we will serve thee. So the people are saying to Rehoboam, who's about to be king, life's been hard. Would you ease that up for us a little bit? That's what the people were asking for. And he said unto them, come back in, after three days. Come back to me after three days. And the people departed. And King Rehoboam took counsel of the old men and stood before Saul, that stood before Solomon his father, while he yet lived, saying, "What counsel give ye? What counsel give ye me to return and answer to this people?" And he spake unto them, saying, "If thou be kind to these people and please them and speak good words to them, they will be thy servants forever." The old advice is. If you be kind, if you give them good words, they'll be servants forever. It's not, you want a friend, just be chill. A lot of the world wants to project parenting as be their friend, be their friend, be their friend, when the truth is they need a dad. And that's how a lot, I, my personal opinion, what do I know, I'm 21. My personal opinion, they need a dad more than they need a friend. And that's if they have no friends. And you'll see why here in just a second. But he forsook the counsel which the old man gave him and took the counsel of the young men 
that were brought up with him that stood before him. And he said unto them, what advice, ye give, what advice give ye that we may return and answer to this people which is spoken to me, saying, ease somewhat of the yoke that thy father put upon us. And the young men that were brought up with him spake unto him, saying, thou shalt thou answer the people that spake unto thee, saying, thy father made our yokes heavy, Make, our, make thou it somewhat lighter for us. Thus shall thou say unto them, My finger shall be bigger, shall be thicker than my father's loins. For whereas my father put heavy yokes upon you, I will put more to your yoke. My father chastised you with whips, I will chastise you with scorpions. They went exactly opposite. <laughs> it wasn't a go this way. Okay, we're going to go that way. It was exactly opposite. Where you get your advice from is very, very, very important. He chose to take his buddy's advice, and I'll paraphrase somewhat of the story, basically split Israel into two different countries. There was Judah, and there was the rest of Israel. So, the consequence to that decision was very, very, very expensive. This has a lot to do with your ears and your eyes, though. Rehoboam said, what do I want to do? I got my buddies, I got what the people are asking for, and I got this old guy, these old men's advice. I'm going to take my buddies. He listened to the wrong advice, but with his eyes, he said... Me and my buddies, we got this figured out. I don't know if this was intentional or how it was, but before he became king, it was and Rehoboam, and then the second he left the people, it said, and King Rehoboam. The second he got a title, it was my time to shine. No bueno. <laughs> you got to guard your eyes. Watch your eyes. Point three is open your heart. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23 says, Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Keep your heart. The devil's trying to go after your heart. Oh, no, is he trying to go after your heart? If you knew half the stuff, these methods that he's using, it's, it's, it's insane. I mean, you look at Epstein's list just came out. Let's, we'll, take, we'll run down this rabbit shell for just two seconds. Epstein's list just came out. And it's amazing at these people, then you see, man, they were doing that. I, we looked up to them in society. But these are terribly awful things that are happening, happening not on some island somewhere, not just on some island somewhere. They're happening right here, I guarantee it. I'm mean, not meaning in this building. I'm meaning in this city, right in this Colorado, right in this America, terrible, awful things are going on. And the devil is waging war. And he's winning in a lot of hearts. In Psalms 139, verse 23, Search me, O Lord, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. Your actions demonstrate your heart. What are you doing to tr what, what are you allowing God to do to try your heart? Many people, they never really grow because they never really go anything. Go, go, they never really learn from anything. Everyone goes through stuff. I'm sorry, misphrased that. But are you allowing God to work on your heart? Are you putting your heart up on the proverb proverbial chopping block and saying, God, trim the fat? There's a lot of search me, O oh Lord, that very few people actually do. Because if you ask me if they did it, it would be very evident in their life. There would be a lot more meek people. There would be a lot more kinder people. But you have a lot of people who are like this next verse. Psalms 51 and 10, create me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. You've got to ask God to create a new heart wash it, scrub it. Dad did a message a few months, it's probably more than that, 
about a samurai sword. And the beating and folding and beating and folding and beating and folding and shaping and grinding and beating and folding and shaping and grinding, and you get the point, that goes on for that blade to be what it needs to be is extremely strenuous for the metal in that blade, but is extremely necessary for the final product. So the question is, do you want to be a lump of metal, a comfortable lump of metal, or do you want to be a blade that's, that you're going to say, God, work on me, wash me, create a new heart in me, and renew a right spirit? Fourth point is open my spirit. You have to open your spirit. When uh, we, Dad used to do, uh, I think so. It was an example of a kid, and he had his fist opened, and he said, how open is your spirit? And he would open his fist and close his fist, and he would say, tell me when to stop. And depending on how open or close his fist was, was attemp attempting to have the child describe if he was going to really listen or if he had just closed himself off. Like right now, I'm probably hard to listen to and probably hard to follow. I'm sorry. But if we open our spirits to God and say, I want to learn something, he will teach you something. Many people say they haven't heard from God in forever, but they haven't read their Bible. So what are they really saying? It's hard to hear when you don't open up. I remember uh, this example of this this uh, wide receiver and he was his head was about the size of this planet I'm is I don't know he had a very strong neck um, but it became very evident to his coach that he was not going to listen to a thing he said so he had to just fire him he just came in and fired him we don't want God to give up on us. We need to keep our ears, our hearts, our minds, our spirits, our eyes open to what he has to say. So let's pray that God keep us open to him, that we open up our lives as well. God can't use a closed heart. God can't use a closed, a blind person, a intentionally blind person. Imagine trying to lead someone, and you can't see at all. I could be two inches away from this step, and I have absolutely no idea. Probably be pretty painful to fall over. But if I open my eyes and say, God, show me something, he will. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for, thank you for speaking us to, to us tonight. God, keep us, help us to open our eyes, open our eyes, open our ears, open our heart, open our spirit to you and to what you have to say to us every day. Help us, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen.